moving on to our chapter two of biostatistics with Dr. Kamal Kishore, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so the first chapter cover the foundations of the data, the clinic, and some of the basic necessities. We need to run the regression. It's like a raw ingredient. When you have to prepare your vegetable or the pulses at the home, then you purchase the raw ingredient for them. So the first chapter was about the raw ingredient. The second chapter was, okay, what needs to be done? What is the process? What should be the fundamental things which we need to know for the cooking actually? And what are the various weapons or things that are available? Uh, not the weapons, but the tools which are available. Apologies for my wording. So, but before we commence on that, many a time the people ask me the reason that why we need to run the multivariable analysis. Actually, we are happy doing the bivariate analysis, such as t test, such as ANOVA, such as chi square test. Why we need to go for a regression analysis? So I'll give you the five compelling reasons to why to go and learn the intricacies of regression analysis. Okay, so you are looking now at the screen, the five reasons. The number one thing is when we talk about those test bivariate analysis, we are only talking about a one single individual variable and our dependent variable. You cannot have more than one variable. And you can always say in life, there are always more than one factor which contributes. Now let's revisit our some of the algebra classes till the 10th standard when they used to say that the Ram used to do the work in these many days. Okay, that's fine, agreeable. But the medicine do not work on that basis only. That Ram can be efficient every time on the same accuracy level. Now in the medicine, the Ram performance may depends upon how his energy level is, whether he or she slept on the previous night, whether he or she is preparing for the situation, whether if the situation is coming, he or she buckle under the pressure. So there are many contributing factors, right? So but in those all those univariate analysis, we only do one test, okay? That's the number one thing. Second thing is, we have only nominal independent variable as we spoke about. And you know what is a nominal independent variable? Then, when you can have only one independent and one dependent variable, you have unadjusted estimates. You don't, you are not adjusting for the other factors which are responsible for the effect. One example could be like, let us say, The statistics, most of us, now this chapter is also about the statistics. Many of the applied researchers have a statistics anxiety. We do have uh, certain skills, also standardized skills for that, that when it comes to the statistics application, we feel anxious. So now the statistics anxiety, we want to find what is the statistics anxiety in faculty and what is the statistics anxiety among the normal researcher or the students. Now, the statistics anxiety may be higher in one group as compared to other, depending upon, but that's only so far it goes. Now, if we need to know how many hour of training session somebody has taken, we cannot adjust for that. Similarly, we cannot adjust for whether does somebody like mathematics or statistics or how much exposure previously somebody have. So we cannot adjust those estimates. So those are unadjusted. So one, we have unadjusted estimate. Then we have unadjusted p-values also, right? So corresponding to that. And many of the statistical tests, what you apply, you do not know how much variability you are explaining, actually, how much dependent variable you are explaining, right? So that's one of the major challenges. So these are multiple, the phenomenon or the factor which takes us to the regression. Now, what is a regression? I'll say this, you remember this phrase, 
mathematics is the mother of all sciences, right? We used to say this thing. Similarly, regression can be called as the mother of maybe almost all statistical tests in one way or another form. So we see multiple examples where we imply, but do we have an example of a realistic scenario? If you could, most of us watch movies or maybe know what a Netflix and IMD movie club recommended. Now they do recommend movies. How I see different kind of the movie, let us say I have a certain preference in collection, I'm watching the movie. On the basis of that, Netflix recommend me some movies, right? But IMDb is going to recommend me certain movies. So how they are done? So that's a one example of the regression. You can look at the 2016 competition by the Netflix, which was approximately around $10 million competition to improve the accuracy of their regression. Right, so that may be available on the internet. How oh, Amazon, I read books. You people are reading books, let's say online and purchasing. So the Amazon recommends certain kind of the books on our previous purchase history. That's another example. Third, now if you look at our mobiles, so the previously, whenever we used to be in the community, our surrounding walls used to be same, same tree for everybody. Purpose may be different. Same ground for everybody. This tiny device, a mobile, it have all together a different universe. My mobile will have a different kind of the new setup, different kind of the notification I may be getting. So this is a personalized environment. That's all an example of the regression. So, and morally, whatever news I'm looking at, you might have noticed once you start searching, for something, so you start getting news of that kind or that place is typically that kind of scenario. So what's at the play? Regression is at the play. Similarly, most of you have qualified NEET or the common uh, admission test basically. Why these are conducted? Because it tests your ability how effectively you can perform in your duty later on basically. Maybe in your medical life. Although these tests are not perfect, and there is always chance of error, accuracy, but still they are a good predictor. So what is being used here? It's a regression which we are using here. These are some of the examples from the another domain. So now you know that, okay, this is the regression and we can apply. So then after that, you may be asking a question that the regression analysis are basically a sort of a mathematical equation which a statistician keeps on spitting out of their mouth. So let us try to maybe decode the link between the equation and the research question. For our understanding, let us take an example where I don't like mathematics maybe or the abbreviation. So how can I visualize the same relationship? So first of all, will define what a regression analysis is. That will lay the foundation of how to forgo or not remember the equations. Maybe statisticians or mathematicians are more comfortable in talking in terms of the equations, but the non-normal human being. So the regression analysis, statistical technique, which is used to model the linear relationship, mark my word, the linear relationship between independent and dependent variable. Now, independent variable could be your predictor, right? Let us say, and dependent variable is, let us say your health, you want to improve somebody's health. Now, the main independent variable in this could be intervention in terms of the med medication. Similarly, you may be looking at, first of all, the person's quality of life, person's social life, person's demographic characteristics, or like their socioeconomic status, what kind of the diet they are taking. These are independent variables. Right? And you want to maximize their growth potential or recovery or a treatment right? by looking at these independent factors, which we can be. That is how. So this is independent and dependent variable. So then normally, when you look at the graph, the dependent variable is always plotted on a y-axis, okay? So the vertical is y-axis and horizontal is x-axis. So dependent variable. Now, for the equation part, 
normally whatever statistician used to write y is equal to mx plus c or y is equal to a plus bx or whatever this is nothing is the it is just the outcome which is a dependent variable model is nothing but the some representation of independent variable and then in reality whatever is happening we are replicating that with the mathematical model so there will be certain error okay with some residual or some we are not able to 100% say with accuracy that this is going to be the scenario we will be near to that not 100% right so that's what our error is so this is what so outcome dependent model are independent variable combination of independent variable will be form the model component and then whatever we are not able to tell with the 100% accuracy will fall into the error actually. So that's what the regression equation is. Now what does it tell me? Because ultimately I want to maximize the prediction of my dependent variable for independent variable. So ultimately my interest or what the regression tell me is how much my outcome variable is changing for a unit change in a particular variable. You might say, what is the interest? There are a lot of compelling reasons to study this. How do you expedite a child is learning? What should be the trigger point? Regression is the way. You want to improve your patient, right? And then you want to expedite the process of improvement or recovery of the patient. So then you need to identify those trigger point where it is to. Some people's weight is maybe, or let us say blood glucose level is not in control. You want to have a certain trigger point which triggers those and bring that into the normal range basically. Okay, so that's where the regression will come into picture. So this is what the dependent variable change. Now, when we have now discuss about the equation and what are the link between the normal lingo what we talk about and then ultimately normally we should say that a picture is worth a thousand words but then we need to understand how that picture is behaving so now this is one example of the regression plot i'm showing you and how to read it actually so <clears throat> the x-axis which you are talking about this x-axis is a predictor variable and then after that, when you're looking at here, the, although it is coming, observation, right? So when you do the green dots are actual observation, which we have collected from the data. And this is the line which we have, regression line, which we have framed due to, due to a mathematical model we have got. So this line is passing through these points. So these are basically observation. And this is a regression line. And there are certain positive or negative differences. So to give you an example, when you calculate the average of marks in a class, some people score higher than average, some people score lower than average. So the positive difference is those people who have scored higher. In this case, those who are above the regression line will leave have a positive residue or the positive error. Those who will be below this regression line will have a negative error component or negative residue. In the nutshell, when you look at this error would be zero. That is why we used to go for the squaring of it. So ordinary least square. We will not go into that technical integrity, but this is ordinary least square. Now, before we depart, so this is a dependent variable. Actually, what we're talking about, the vertical axis is the dependent variable. So that's what we need to know, that what each point is. Right? Now, our intention in the regression line is to minimize these error component actually. Okay, so that is why we need to put so that more the point are closer to your regression line, more accurate and more better your prediction would be. So that's the basic intention that we're trying to do. Ah, uh, that's all for the chapter two. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. So now for chapter 